everyone, and welcome to Sideshow Live! Woo! We are here. Welcome to the second part of the uh, Game of Thrones spoiler episode. Just kidding, because I'm getting looks from off camera like, really another hour of this and I'm sure that's what you're all saying in the chats right now. Just so you guys know, Buffy is in the YouTube chats and she will be talking to you and putting any questions that you might have into my Q&A. Uh, so be sure to ask a lot of questions because we have a lot of awesome products, some of which we are showing for the first time on this show. So what we are showing you is we have a whole DC segment with the Poison Ivy premium format figure. That's the first time we've shown her on this show, but we're also gonna show you what she goes with, including the Batman premium format figure, the Joker and Harley Quinn. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's gonna be pretty cool. We have a Q and A with Olivia about her Rachel fine art print and that thing is gorgeous. Oh my God, especially you must be loving it being one of the biggest Blade Runner fans yeah, I ever. Have, I have to have it. You have to have it. Have to. Yeah, what about the original? I tried to steal it from her and she was uh, not amused. Yeah, she was definitely not amused when I kept trying to take the Princess Leia. She kept like taking it back from me and I was like, no, I just want to look at it. Can I just hold it? And she was like, no, I don't trust you. Yeah. You're going to take it. Anyway, so we have that. We also have a Marvel, uh, but, a Marvel segment with the Silk statue and the Electra premium format figure. I don't know how I like finagled it so two of my absolute favorite characters are in the same segment, but ha ha, joke's on all y'all. Anyway, what? I did do it. Congratulations to me. Um, <laughs> so we also have that. We have a Let Your Kids Side show and this week is a Pretty awesome prize, if I do say so myself. And last week, we also had a lot of really awesome participation, so we'll be talking about that. And then we have a recorded segment with Matt Bischoff. We actually got the head of production on camera ah, to talk about the nun statue, which is crazy, amazing, and awesome. It was really, really cool to sit down and talk to him about that particular piece. It's a new line of horror statues for us and we're all really excited about it, so. It made me see it in a different way. Yeah, it definitely made me look at that statue completely differently. Yeah. And then also, um, yeah, just all the Easter eggs and all the little pieces about it. Matt really, I mean, there's a reason that he knew what he was doing when he put yeah. that together. So um, yeah, the, the Nun segment is coming up. And yeah, so like I said, live Q&A happening throughout the show. So if you have any questions about things that you're seeing, be sure to ask us and we'll try to answer things as we can. So let's get started. Um, first up, featured collector is Richie Yap. Richie Yap. Ooh, ooh. Look at those. Oh, you have the vision, PF. Oh. I'm so jealous of that Sinestro. Oh, that's the Sinestro. Where's the, oh, the green. Oh, wow. I remember that. That's from like a few years ago. Yeah. It's a while back. Yeah. That's a really, really, that's a really cool setup also. Um, and then you know, Spidey, obviously, and then a little horror there too. So awesome, great collection, Richie. Thank you so much for sharing your collection with us. If you would like to be the next featured collector, you can have a little segment here on um, our show and also in our blog. You just head on over to side.show slash blog and click the apply now button. We love seeing what you got and seeing all the different collections that are out there. It's pretty cool. So uh, we have a first, our first break coming up, We're coming up now. Right just, just right now. And uh, when we, we're just gonna roll right into the Olivia segment talking about the Rachel Fine art print. You're watching Sideshow Live. We'll be right back. And I think something that's so cool about Electra is um, when you take her backstory, it's the way she is, is, is out of necessity. Like these mm -hmm. things specifically happened to her as a child and her father wanted her to be able to protect herself. So mm -hmm. he put her in every form of fighting and martial arts that he possibly could. And she excelled in all of them. Mm -hmm. So really she was like made to do what she was going to do. Mm -hmm. And it was done out of this father's love. So at her root, although it seems like a selfish thing to be at this you know, when you when you think of someone whose their code is only out for themselves, mm -hmm. that sounds very selfish. And yeah, it is. But when you when you go back to why she is the way she is, the, it's all yeah. done from love. In the context of yeah, yeah. So having a having someone who wanted you to be able to protect yourself yeah. and, and be able to live life like that. Right. Hello everyone and welcome back to Sideshow Live. Hello. We have a very special interview segment with one of our all time favorite guests. Hi Olivia. Hi. 
Hi. I Hi. just said hello. I know you no, said I'm hello. <laughs> you said hello to all of them. I'm <laughs> saying hello to you personally because I missed you. Um, so Olivia is here today to show off her latest piece, which might be a replicant, but it definitely can't be replicated. Huh? Huh? I I'm, got it. I got it. I'm funny. I, I, I'm I really it. funny. I got it. Uh, so this is Rachel from Blade Runner. Oh Rachel. my gosh. I'm going to step out so you can take a look at her. And now, me. now the style of Blade Runner is so unique. How did you go about replicating, I swear to God, I'll stop doing that, that world? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't easy because all the pictures of her, all the, uh, uh, the pictures we could get of her were literally in the dark. And there's smoke. They're there's really so much smoke and in that world. Get, and she was such a, this piece is really about her when you first see her walking out in that and that walk with the uh, everything she's wearing is so constrictive you mm -hmm. know so you just see the shoulders and you see the, this this um, stiff the stare yeah I always think of her stare, stare when and you're just struck by how beautiful she is she's mm -hmm. just spectacular yeah and, and something you're really known for in your work is capturing those eyes of the character and you really do that again with yeah. Rachel right here where you're just you see that stare you see her walking forward and it is a striking beauty that you're instantly She's so striking she was fashioned of her 1940s uh, style and she had these eyebrows at the at the time she came out 1982 big eyebrows were we're in and big shoulders we're in. Yeah. And she had that. like these two pelts on his what? eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were just silky oh, beautiful. They're she was so just gorgeous. gorgeous. And uh, and you know, she in the second movie she just became she just became this icon for all replicants, mm -hmm. I, I think. So she's she's uh, important in the in the film. She's just not I mean, besides the fact that she was just stunning through it, I just think that she's she's going to be the mother of replicants. Right. You know, yeah. so. And um, just one more question about her eyes. What are you trying, what do you think Rachel is saying to you right now with her eyes? <laughs> what did you want her to be saying? Take this painting up and get me out of the fire. <laughs> is what she's saying. Oh, no. Was this, this the other this one she, from the This fire? is the other one I ran out oh, with. No. Well, we actually have and the original right here as well. I had to pry well. it out of my friend's hands to do... Uh, is, oh, wow. Wait a minute, you got the shine. Yeah, I got on. the shine. There let we go. Let me... Uh, oh. Yeah, she's, she's yeah. heavy, too. Yeah. She is. Yeah. But yeah. What is she saying? You know, she's you're just being introduced to her. She's saying, I'm going to stick around for many generations. Mm -hmm. You're all going to be... Yeah, she's You're important. all going to be a part of me. Ready or not, here she's I come. She's a beauty icon on top. I mean, oh, she's yeah. just one of the uh, uh, incredible. I heard a funny story about why there's two Shh, boards. Quiet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Am I not well, allowed to repeat no, the story? No, I kept. To why I had to keep boards? working because I didn't have enough uh, reference for it. So I kept working and working, and before you know it, it grew. Well, there are other artists in the 15th century allowed to do that. Then I'm no, allowed, you're to, allowed do to do too. whatever you I want. I can keep adding panels on. You can add side. whatever you want. We'll you keep know? we'll keep featuring it, and we'll keep loving you for it. It's amazing. <laughs> so, um, I'm so, gonna that, so that is Rachel. Oh, that's Rachel. So uh, one more Rachel. question. I'm gonna. I I swear I would stop with the replicant jokes, but um, tell me, was your approach to Rachel different because you knew she wasn't human? Oh, you know, no, really, she's mm -hmm. just, I'm just trying to capture uh, her beauty, which was unique. I mean, it's just really down to, to that, you know, and, and the first impression of, of, you know, like when, when Dietrich came out in, in the old movies, you know, she mm -hmm. just is like, just, you just held your breath because she was yeah, just, she's just there. stunned you. There, she was just magical. Mm -hmm. So the same is for Rachel. So uh, that's really what I'm trying to get is the full glamour and mystery and, and, and the incredible Blade Runner and Aliens. That was my favorite movies back then. I mean, that was my top favorite movies. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. I love that. Yeah, so um, these ladies were special to me. I, I love that. I love that you get to paint these women who were special to I you. Do They're too. so iconic. And I, I love the fact that the women who were special to you are so strong and so um, 
you know, they, they forge their own paths. Like, regardless as to whether or not Rachel is human or not, she, what, she, like, she forged her own way in her world and became the mother of all replicants. So that's fantastic. But with Aliens, the, uh, uh, Ripley was very commanding about what she, 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 she was a no-nonsense, oh, she yeah. didn't command her. And Rachel sort of haphazardly became this important uh so they're two sides i mean it was just like you know a random act of uh, a trip through through life that that mm -hmm. made her so important but it's interesting yeah, yeah. that's amazing fascinating for me awesome. for me anyhow <laughs> well Ra <laughs> you're fine so rachel is going to go up for sale or pre-order, excuse me, on Friday. Uh, that would be the framed version between noon and 3 p.m. Friday. And then the unframed version, if there are any available, will go up for sale on Monday between noon and 3 p.m. This, once again, is an Olivia. They're beautiful and amazing, and the custom framework on thank this one you. in particular is just <laughs> stunning. So again, thank you, Olivia, for coming in. Thank you all for Thanks watching, and we'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome to another Sideshow unboxing. Today we will be unboxing the Harley Quinn premium format figure. She's the latest to start shipping from our DC premium format figure collection. So let's just get her out of the box. First off, she has this really awesome base. I recommend holding it from right under here because there are a lot of little pieces um, from all of Harley's fun explosions that uh, could potentially break off and you don't want that when you're unboxing a figure. Um, next, we're going to grab Harley very steadily by her body. She comes in one piece and you're going to want to go at um, her at a little bit of an angle with the key in. So there you go right there. Next, she comes with two portraits, one unmasked and one masked. So let's start off with the unmasked portrait just right there like that. Um, her baton goes into, let's turn this around, goes into her belt loop like that. And then we have her famous mallet, which is super detailed and has Bud and Lou engraved on it. I don't know if you can see that right here. It says Bud and Lou. So you can see that her hands both have magnets, so you're just gonna want to key in and be careful and aware of where the magnets are because they will pull right into her wrists and they fit like that. Next we have her masked portrait, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out really quick. The collector's edition does come with both portraits, so you will be able to choose how you display your Harley. And then finally, her exclusive is this bat in the box figure. It comes with that right here, I can hold it up. There you go, a little bat in the box figure. And there you have it. This is the Harley Quinn premium format figure, the latest in our DC premium format figure collectible line. You are watching Sideshow, and thank you for watching another unboxing with us. Awesome. We had all that time, and I just noticed that Harley's arm is off because the Joker kicked it. Luckily, I just watched that out of the box and I know how to put it back together. So relevant information. There we go. Um, so be careful <laughs> with stuff like that. So anyway, um, hi guys, welcome back. These are our DC, our new DC premium format figures. Some of them, at least the ones that live in Gotham that we have in stock right now. So let's start off with Poison Ivy since this is the first time we've shown her on this show. Like, look at that, she is stunning. Like, I love the portrait on this particular piece. Like, this um, this is the collector's edition portrait. The exclusive on her is her more villainous type portrait. She definitely has a lot more weeds going on and she has like crazier hair. But there's something very seductive about this particular portrait and the way her eye line goes and her hair and everything. So I'm a huge fan of the way uh, this piece turned out. This is the Poison Ivy premium format figure. Uh, you can head on over to side.show slash Ivy and she is going to be shipping very, very soon. So we decided to show her on this show. She is um, an all sculpt piece, um, but just the details on her just continuously amaze me. 
like just to turn her back around really quickly like look at all this vine work the 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 way it's raised and sculpted out right here and then the paint that has to go involved with it and then the way her um, her skin changes colors at her different like muscular points is really, really cool. She definitely looks like not only is she going to trick you into drinking something that would be bad for you, but that she could also kick your butt if you needed it. So I'm a very big fan of this particular piece right here, including her base. Um, with the like Venus flytrap type thing going on with it. I, I don't know, I just I just really like it. So, um, there, ooh, look at look at that knee pop. She's just like, the pinup pose to me is like what does it. It's the pinup pose, the pinup hair. She definitely looks like she is earning her place in the Gotham City Sirens right here. Look at that, boom, boom, anyway. So that is Poison Ivy. Over here, we're gonna go over to Batman, Batman. The uh, Batman premium format figure. Now we featured him on the show before, but um, we just decided to, to show him again because of what a cool way he can look like he's sort of sneaking up on Ivy. You can have them posed against one another, looking at one another, having some sort of showdown. But Batman um, is just an incredible piece. His uh, exclusive is still available and the exclusive on him is the alternate hands that have the swap out batarangs on them. So you can use both hands to swap out. You can have one hand, uh, mix and match type situation. Batman is just so cool. Once again, he has these and in, this incredible base um, with a lot of different Easter eggs on it. And um, he also has a fabric, highly, po highly posable, fully posable cape that anyone named Tim Hansen would be happy to get his hands on. But yeah, that portrait, I really enjoy this kind of bigger Batman that's very much like looming and imposing. You definitely get the feel that he's like the watcher over Gotham itself. And I just, I'm just a big fan. So head on over to side.show slash Batman PFF and you can get yours now because he is currently shipping. And like I said, the collector, uh, both the collector edition and the exclusive edition are still available. So you are gonna need that right there. I look so small next to all these quarter scale <laughs> figures. Um, I'm used to like the six scales because I guess the last show that I really did was the Hot Toys show. So I had all the six scales and they're all about the same size. So it's really cool to see things like the Joker who is um, on a pogo stick and um, like we showed you, the pogo stick actually has a huge metal key that goes from the base up through the center of it. So that way the Joker itself will, um, he's built for longevity and display purposes, obviously, because you know that's what we hope you do with your collection is display it. So um, that way he'll last a whole lot longer with this metal key into the bottom. And then also for balance, because this is a crazy dynamic pose. So you have the Joker gas, Personally, one of the cool ways I've seen this displayed is when you put those like electric tea light candles behind this Joker gas because then it kind of flickers and um, it lights up the whole base because this is a kind of a semi-translucent type uh, material that we use to make it look like gas. And so when you can, you can see all the light come through, it really, really looks creepy. Like the Joker definitely did something to uh, City Hall because he is breaking the seal of Gotham there on his pogo. Right here, we're showing him, oh, I should also, there we go. Now you can see the base a little bit better. Sorry there, Brett. <laughs> Sorry, get out of the Joker's light. Wouldn't wanna steal his spotlight right there. But uh, yeah, and then right here, you see him with his exclusive edition, which is his more classic portrait and the cake hand. Um, so, oh, jolly good Batsy. I love, I love it. And then also, like I keep pointing out, every time I look at this piece, there's something new about it that I didn't notice before. For example, the last time he was on this show, I noticed, this is a perfect shot for that, like his ha 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 on the bottom of his foot. That's so cool. And the your face here on the heel of the... And the your face here, where? It's on the heel of the shoe. That says your face here? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Again, <laughs> hey, we have like a perfect track record. Every time I see this figure, I notice something completely different or something's pointed out to me that's completely different that I've never noticed before. So that's amazing. I love it. And um, this is the Joker premium format figure. Definitely head on over to side.show slash the Joker PF. That's side.show slash the Joker PF and pick yours up now, right now.
Just go. Go. But of course, don't forget to get Harley as well because you're, you're not gonna want the Joker without Harley. So this is the Harley Quinn premium format figure. I can't really reach her, but she is a pretty good, just she need to be turned just slightly. I can't really do it from here. Nope, I got it. There we go. Boom. Oh, you're gonna see her face so good right now. There we go. So good. Um, there you go. That's the Harley Quinn premium format figure with the Joker right behind her. Hey, awesome way to display them both. Check this out. This is a really cool display. I feel like this could be like your desk. It is my desk. Haha. Uh -huh. Right now. Right now. It's like we planned it that way. Anyway, um, so the Harley Quinn premium format figure, her exclusive is this bat in the box right here. She comes with two swap out portraits that they're both available in the collector edition and in the exclusive edition. So she has her full cow portrait and then just um, the, the mask and the makeup portrait as well. I love both of them personally. This one, I think I like slightly better. Um, I don't know why though, because the other one is really, really cool and it has, and she's laughing in it. It's very classic Harley, but it is always nice to get something that's a little bit different. Yeah. Especially I guess, if you have a bunch of classic Harley already. I guess that's true because I have the old Harley PF. Yeah. So with this one, it's kind of nice because her costume's a little bit different. So it's, it's very cool to have her with a little bit of a different costume and a little bit of a different portrait. And there's that close up on the bat in the box, which is her exclusive. Um, both the exclusive and the collector edition are still available at har at side at harleyquinn.com at side.show slash harleyquinnpf that's side.show slash harleyquinnpf um, some of her cool easter eggs include she has a little bit of a robin cape attached to her belt as well as um, bud and lou her hyenas are engraved on her mallet this time around um, let's see if i can turn from here so you can see some of her easter eggs the outfit is red too because the black is kind of matte whereas the red, the red is, is totally is glossy. glossy it's really yeah it's really cool awesome. yeah you can see that you can definitely see um the robin cape right there there we go <laughs> it's like just a little bit down a little bit down yeah oh oh no i was talking about the robin cape i like that as a little bit of a nod to some storylines in the comics anyway you guys, we have a short break coming up, and when we come back, we will have the Marvel premium format figures. We actually added another uh, Devil of Hell's Kitchen, not another, the Devil of Hell's Kitchen to the lineup so we can see how he is displayed with the Electra premium format figure, and then also the Silk Statue. You're watching Side Show Live. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome to another Sideshow Unboxing. Today we will be taking a look at the Iron Studios 10th scale art statue. This is Thanos and he is from Avengers Infinity War. So let's just get started. There are two pieces to his base. There's a bottom part and the top part. Just keys directly in like that. Then you get the Mad Titan himself. He keys into the top like so. Ooh. There we go. Then he has these different points where the moon is being thrown at Titan. That's one. Two. And three, right there. Now this uh, piece also has a light up feature. So what you do is you take this 
It has a click on, click off. It goes right in here into his arm and you can just have him light up. And that is the Thanos tent scale art scale statue by Iron Studios. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sideshow Live. I am super excited for this particular segment because it is the Electra premium format figure paired with her boy Daredevil. Uh, that premium format figure, which is waitlisted, but we wanted to show you guys what they look like together because they look pretty freaking rad together. Look at all this like amazingness of Hell's Kitchen. These bases are so cool. And then we'll get to Silk in a little bit. But um, this is the first look at the final production piece of the Electra premium format figure. She, it, oh my God, she's, look at that. Ah, oh my God, she's like the perfect version of Electra. Um, just so cool, so amazing. You see her with her signature size. Um, she actually comes with two ways to display her arms. So you can display it the way that you have it right here. Thank you, Brett. Or I'm gonna do this first. So take off the hand, swap out the arm, and then you can put this arm in like this. And of course, put the hand back on. And then you can have her, instead of pointing it out, she's pointing it down. It's just a little bit of a different pose depending on how you want to display your Electra piece. Now, it makes it easier for her to turn and not hit other, other pieces that might knock it over. And that's why I'm gonna turn her around like this while her hand is down. So look at, I love her newly designed costume. She's kind of like an inspired by Electra. This isn't exactly a costume that's been seen anywhere uh, exactly in the comics or on screen. But um, I love that they had a call out to her original look as well as they gave her some armored bits because you know she is an assassin. So she does do a fair amount of fighting and um, needs some protection sometimes. But they also gave her the hair, the earrings, the boots, and then she's standing on a Hell's Kitchen themed base um, that is meant to go with her boy Daredevil. So Daredevil is over here. Once again, he is waitlisted but we wanted to show you him as a companion piece to Electra. He is shown with his signature billy clubs and he is standing atop, again, a Hell's Kitchen themed base. Um, and he just, I love the paint scheme on him and the sculpt and everything about him is just super amazing. You have his signature DD on his chest and he just looks really, really cool. Really awesome job on these pieces. So head on over to side.show slash Electra PFF side.show slash Electra PFF, and she is going to be shipping so soon. I just, wow. I'm just, I love whenever a piece comes out looking exactly the way you think it's gonna look. Oh, right, I also have um, Electra, her exclusive, sorry guys, I almost forgot about this, is um, instead of her size, she can also be having her signature katanas. So you can have her katanas displayed as well. That's one. And let me swap out the other one over here. And there you go, you can display her that way with her katanas as well. And then, if you're feeling super adventurous, you can, once again, swap out the arm. Now the arm, again, comes with both versions of her, the uh, exclusive and the collector's edition. The only thing that is exclusive are these swap out katana arms, so then you can swap out that, look at that, boom. So cool, and now I'm like a little nervous to turn her around because I didn't test the uh, length on the katana, so she might behead Daredevil right here. Dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. Actually, she's clear, she's good. There's a shot right there, that's super good, boom. <laughs> I love it, it's amazing. So um, that's the Electra Premium Format figure. Once again, is she gonna take me out? Mm -hmm. Maybe, nope. Um, you can pre-order her now and she is shipping very soon. I'm gonna, look at that. But I'm gonna put her katanas back on just because they're a little bit more manageable. Size. Or size, that's what I mean, sorry, thank you. This is where I learn left and right. Did I do that right? Correctly? 
Is that correct? Nope. <laughs> I am really bad at left and right. It is something that we constantly have to do with me during out of the box videos because of the fact that I am ambidextrous. So I do this constantly to figure out left from right. Anyway, so you can also display her like this with one katana and one side, which is actually like, I think pretty cool also. Anyway, so over here, we wanted to do a little bit of a feature on the silk uh, statue that is done by Mark Brooks. This is part of the Mark Brooks artist series. Look how pretty she is. Oh my gosh, I love silk so much. Let me move her a little closer because she is a fifth scale statue. So she is a little bit of a smaller scale than these premium format figures, but most of our artist series pieces are fifth scale statues instead. Um, this is a companion piece to the Spider Gwen and the Spider Man, both also done by Mark Brooks. She, her exclusive is still available, which is a masked portrait. So Silk uses kind of like a bandana over her face as a mask at the bottom part. And so you can do that as well. Um, something cool about Cindy Moon is that she was actually bitten by the same spider that bit Peter Parker on the same field trip because they were classmates. They have a very different backstory and went very different ways after that point. But uh, on our One Spider Many Bites infographic, you can go see all the different ways that uh, they are connected. Um, though one of the major ways they're not is her silk sense, which is slightly different than the spider sense. So head on over to side.show slash silk and you can get this amazing silk statue, Cindy Moon, she's so cool, uh, done by Mark Brooks. Um, I almost called it a premium format. It is an artist series statue. Uh, you can get that right now. So again, thank you guys for tuning in to two of my favorite ladies and then also Daredevil. Um, Daredevil sold out, so we don't have to pay as much attention to him, but uh, he still is such a cool piece. Like how amazing do these guys look together? Like you saw that video, right? They look super good. So just saying. Anyway, we have, um, oh wait, almost forgot. You guys know what time it is. Guys, this is amazing. First up, I want to thank everyone who participated in last week's because we had some of the highest participation rates that we've had on any Kids Sideshow Challenge in the history of Kids Sideshow Challenges. Last week, we gave away a pre-order for the John Wick six scale figure by Hot Toys because, well, John Wick came out last week and what started John Wick? Everything started with a dog. So what we did was uh, we decided to do a call out for people to put up, um, to share pets that are up for adoption in their area. And they shared almost 1800 dogs and cats across social platforms. So that is so amazing. We're looking at some of them now. Wow, these are some of the adoptable pets that were shared. Do we know if any of them were actually adopted? I don't know. Oh, I hope, I hope some of them were actually adopted and that this really did help in, in all the areas that it could help. So again, like I said, this is the, one of the highest participation rates we've ever had in the Kids Sideshow Challenge. Thank you guys so much for hopefully getting some new homes to all these little puppers and little kitties. Oh, that one in particular suit. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I want They're that one. delivered to your house, Adrian. Oh. <laughs> well, my cat will have a fit. He doesn't, he, he, he needs all the attention all the time and all the barbecue sauce. Anyway, thank you guys. Oh, that one. It's tongue. Oh man, I want them all now. I want them all. Anyway, so you guys, thank you so much for participating. <laughs> I keep trying to say, like, read stuff out of my notes, but then there's another, like, doggo with its amazing little face or a kitten that's, like, looking so cute. Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for sharing. The winner of the John Wick pre order is Cameron from Michigan. So, Cameron from Michigan, congratulations. Yeah. You have been contacted by us already, most likely, um, but we will soon. And like I said, it's a pre-order figure. So when it starts shipping, that's when you'll get your prize. Uh, this week, we have a brand new Kid Side Show Challenge that uh, has, like I said, this is a really cool piece. It is a sold out in, it was so sold out in this particular dimension that we had to use the multiverse and travel to get a copy of it is the Miles Morales fine art print by Anthony Francisco. Take a look at it right there. Uh, and what do we need you to do? We need you to show us your spider Sona. 
Show us your spider sona using found items around your home or office. Create your very own spider sona. Remember when that was, uh, when um, Into the Spider-Verse came out and that was like a huge hashtag across Twitter where you needed to use your spider sona and everybody has their own and people, artists were drawing their own and it was so cool. So we want you to do that using found items in your home or office. You have to give your spider sona a name and you have to use the proper hashtags, follow the rules. Please leave your posts up for at least a week. So until next Wednesday when we announce the winner, you're gonna have to leave those posts up so we can see them on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram. If you do it on each platform, it is 1,000 entries per platform and therefore you can have up to 3,000 bonus entries for, again, this sold out Miles Morales fine art print by Anthony Francisco. We're giving away the framed version too, guys. So this is a really, really epic prize. You're gonna want to definitely enter there. Again, if you head on over to side.show slash L-Y-K-S spider Sona, you can see all the different ways that you can enter for you, enter it. You can use different ways on Gleam, like uh, following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, joining our Facebook group, you can do things like listen to our podcast. There are lots of ways to have lower level entries, but if you wanna go for the big guns, you're gonna to have to create a spider sona from found items in your home or office, post that up on your social media, use the hashtags, and please leave it up until next Wednesday. Guys, we have one more short video break, and when we, uh, well, we're gonna come back with the nun segment from uh, Matt Bischoff, and that is a really, really cool segment. Um, so pay attention to that it is such a cool new line of horror that we're embarking upon through Sideshow Collectibles. So uh, you're watching Sideshow Live and we'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sideshow Live. Today we are here with the nun statue and a very special guest, our head of production, Mr. Matt Bischoff. Hi! Woo! We finally got you on the show. How are you doing? Well, you chained me to the seat. So That's true. Okay. We did. So I couldn't leave. We did. And we we did have the roller that we rolled you in Hannibal Lecter style, so uh, that way you couldn't you couldn't escape. Well, I'm, 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 it's a pleasure to be here, to finally be allowed here and <laughs> sit in the seat. And yeah, yeah. So you're here with our nun statue. I am. Which is quite an awesome piece of art in terms of just like how it's put together. But first, I have a couple of questions. So this is the first in a new horror line that we're launching right now. Why did we pick the nun? We picked the nun because uh, we wanted to reach a new horror audience. And horror has always been a real consistent um, product and um, you know, the Conjuring franchise as, excel, as it's, itself is creating this gigantic universe of all these connected films and, you know, those types of efforts require a lot of thought, but you also have a lot of characters driving that, you know, uh, that movie rollout. And um, we started talking about The Nun last summer when the film was getting promoted for like a September release. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about, you know, maybe this might be the time to, to, to look at it. So when you start looking at all the the box office that these films are making i mean they clearly have an audience oh, yeah. of people who you know really love what they're doing and it just keeps growing and growing with each you know subs uh, oh subs for sure and to have release. someone like james wan behind the whole thing it's like kind of epically yeah. amazing yeah. that he's creating this like layers of horror but they uh, they're all connected cuz the nun made her debut at the end of annabelle 2 actually she's in conjuring conjuring too. and then they kind of previewed uh, the nun standalone film at the end of Annabelle 
creation. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So after the credits, if you stayed in, you saw a scene. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. That's what happened, smoke. guys. If you watched it, it was like boom, 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 like with all those harsh horror cuts and stuff. So this is kind of recreating that particular yeah. first appearance of the nun. Yeah, so it's a pretty striking visual at the end of that film to set up the whole the premise of the next film, and it actually takes place. You know, these films are all uh, dated, so like the Conjures took place in the '70s. This one takes place in. Not 1950, early 50s. Mm -hmm. So they're even going back further in time, and it's a, more of a period piece. And uh, you know that that was a good entry point, or an entry scene, like I was saying about of the nun's entrance, just with the, you know, this entity extinguishing the light of goodness yeah. as it comes down the hall towards we don't know what. And then in the film that was released in September of the aptly titled mm -hmm. the nun, uh, we got to see what that scene was. Uh, Re oh yeah, totally. Yeah. And even this this figure itself is referencing because you, if you can see this here, let me bring it around to this side. This candle is clearly extinguishing, and that one is clearly still lit because the nun hasn't passed it yet, so it's it isn't dark behind it. So that is a really cool. Just conceptually, you're creating a notion of movement and right. and darkness that follows this horror character. Yeah, so in a lot of the, the you know, the scenes that we we saw of her, she's not really she's not doing flips and karate kicks and not, <laughs> she's not in the uh, Marvel universe. Right. But you know, there is a, a presence and so there's an entity within this there's this form of the demon. Mm -hmm. And so what we wanted to capture after seeing the film and having some more context beyond that Annabelle scene. Uh, you know, we wanted to kind of show the story of the creature mm. or the demon. So the Ouroboros portal at the bottom that the uh, cultist Marquis had in his castle that he summoned the demon Valak through. And then the Templars came in and... And that's all the crosses for the Templars. Well, right? the Templars came in and beat his ass. Ooh. And sealed it up with some blood of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. So they have him contained in this castle, but the Templars felt that they need to have some religious entity to contain this evil, so they kept him in the depths of this castle, and the pathway, the subterranean pathway, was all covered with crosses, like we saw in the film, mm -hmm. to kind of keep the evil contained, and that's basically what this level of the piece is, is the corridor going down to the, the, to oh. the, uh, the portal, and then above that's the abbey, so the abbey then was like, built upon the castle and the church decides if you got to populate that area with a lot of holiness to oh, keep yeah. this thing contained so the abbey was there and then according to the story right uh in one of the world wars uh, the bombs were dropped in europe and that opened up the fissure to the portal yeah and then valak pops out <gasps> and then because the abbey's built there it takes the form of one of the nuns to kind of blend in and then just starts Taking them out. Yep. So in one scene, <laughs> we're looking at. No, I'm like that. I'm so compelled. I'm like, yeah. And then what well, you happens? Know what, and then cool, what happens? You know, you see the film for, for what it is as a as a good, you know, good, good jump scare, good film. It's, mm -hmm. it's a fun film to watch. But then as through the development of this, you start reading all the different stuff online, and and we actually had some uh, really good um, reference provided to us from Warner Brothers mm -hmm. and folks at Atomic Monster. You know, had some you know fun input up with it as well and you start learning more about the story into it and you know all the religious aspects you're like wow it's, there's, it really goes pretty deep when you start looking into it so yeah. it, was, it was a fun uh, to concept this piece you know the concept is usually the hardest part the oh, execution yeah. you know once you get to that point it's, it goes really fluidly smooth but it's like what's what's a good concept so I wanted to incorporate a lot of these elements into the piece that's amazing. So you also, this is the prototype that we're showing you right now in this turnaround, but you also brought in one of the uh, production samples as well, so you could show one of the swap outs. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're moving pretty quickly through uh, the sampling process, and we're looking pretty good to stay on target for our estimated, um, wow. That See? is the proto. I'm I know, impressed. it's the proto, and I'm getting a whole lot better. I've heard I have a stories, reputation of me and protos, before. so I just got a whole lot better at yeah. this. There you go. Uh -huh. skills. Yeah. Well, it uh, only took me like five years to finally not break a proto. We will get there at some point. <laughs> um, but like I said, we're going through sampling right now, so we're going to be in production rather shortly, and we're pretty much on target to hit our estimated ship date. But uh, you know, through the engineering, you know, the pieces are going to come down, broken up like this into the body, the head, and the, her habit, or its habit, whatever you want to call it. 
but the head just pops mm. in. The habit slides right on top, the magnet. But the cool thing is if you get the exclusive option, you get the really pissed off back. Oh, the demon face. The yucky face, we call yucky it. Yucky face. Ooh. And it just swaps right out I like do that. like yucky so you get, face. I can't see her in it. Yeah. But it's a pretty simple piece. There's not a whole lot of parts to it, but I think it, you know, we were able to, we purposely did that to provide it at this scale and this size, but in a price point that was attractive for a new conjuring yeah, market. Yeah, that's so totally wanna... what I was thinking too. I'm looking at the product page right here and I'm seeing that it's it's going for 225, which is an insanely awesome price point for something so incredibly detailed that creates a whole scene from a movie. Yeah. So that's insane and awesome. And like Matt just said, uh, the exclusive on it is that enraged portrait of the demon Valak as well. So, wow, it comes with a lot, like two swap out portraits and this entire scene for 225. That's amazing that you guys were able to do that at that price point. Well, it's its own, you know, how the product's designed and how it's executed and, you know, trying to keep those costs uh, within that target. And we were able to, we were very fortunate to hit that and land the plane where we wanted to. Oh, that's amazing. Um, but, you know, this is kind of like the size, back in the day we did some universal uh, diorama statues and they're kind of in a similar scale. So she's, uh, it's a one eighth scale. Oh, wow. I think they were slightly larger, but they're, you know, we did a series of them that are all about that size. And, and I've always been a fan of dioramas mm. and, uh, you know, having a little more uh, to add to the environment of it. And I think it provides a little more storytelling. And with the base of what we have it, we can really tell the story of the, the demon coming up through and into the abbeys that it eventually haunts. That's and amazing. Working right now with the graphic design department to kind of tie something even more below the, the portal ring oh, on the base art so we can That's, oh, I love it. I can't wait out. to see what they come we'll up with. That's amazing. With. So I have to ask one more question and that is, are we hoping to see more of these from this universe or um, is this gonna be kind of a new horror line for us? What can you tease? That's a bunch of nunya. <laughs> <laughs> None your business uh, that was, came from. That was pretty bad. That was a pretty bad pun. Well, we had um, to do one nun pun. I guess so. Yeah. Get them before there's none left. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Sam says stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. The hope, the hope would be to, you know, if, if, this, if this piece resonates and the audience resonates with this, uh, this piece and we can, the Conjuring uh, fans seem to enjoy it, then absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. Do more. We actually have a couple of designs that are in the bag and approved uh, with our friends at Warner Brothers. That if you know things look good, then we'll we'll get those into motion. But we want to see how this one does and how it resonates. Perfect. And look mm -hmm. forward to the upcoming uh, Annabelle three film. I know. Oh, that's gonna be great. Yeah, we'll see yeah. if uh, our friend makes an appearance in that. I don't. I don't know. Hopefully, don't... we'll see it. But mm. we'll see what Did happens. Did you just spoil something? No, I didn't. Okay. You, I didn't. You really don't know. I absolutely didn't. Okay. I don't know nothing. Hmm. I didn't, I didn't. Wow, okay, well I don't believe you, but oh my gosh. I actually, I actually don't, I don't. <laughs> oh, well no. thank you Matt so much for coming on the show. Thank, thank you, you guys all me. for watching. We have a short video break. If you would like to pre-order The Nun, the short link is right below. You can go ahead right there and pre-order The Nun. It is expected to ship between August and October of 2019. So it's a very short turnaround for a pre-order and look at what you're getting. This is such a cool little, diorama movie scene type piece um, with also a very detailed portrait of the demon Valak. And if you get the exclusive, you also get the angry demon as well. So be sure to head on over to sideshow.com and pre-order your nun right away. We have another short break. And when we come back, you'll be seeing some more Sideshow Live. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. How cool is that nun figure? Like seriously, I wish that I could have still had it, but unfortunately, Matt took it away because of the prototype incident, but what else? It's cool. But oh my gosh, you guys, this has been such an excellent show. Like I said, that nun statue is so cool. So head on over to side.show slash the nun statue and be sure to pre-order that girl. I almost called her that baby. Pre-order that baby. What's, I, I don't know what, is that my new catchphrase? Like, yeah, go pre-order that baby. I've had too much coffee. Anyway, um, you guys, this has been an excellent show. We showed you the Olivia Rachel Fine art print with an interview with Olivia herself. We did a segment on the DC premium format figure collection that include, well, the Gotham side, because obviously there's Superman and Wonder Woman, but we were able to have Batman, the Joker, Harley, and of course, Poison Ivy. The first look at that uh, piece live on our show was here. Then we had a segment with 
Mar with Marvel, with Marvel, um, Daredevil and Elektra. I really should not be allowed to have so much coffee right before or enough downtime where I can just continue to drink it. Um, so we had Daredevil, the premium format figure, Alexa, Electra, you would think I would know one of my favorite characters and her name, but I did that exact same thing yesterday to, to uh, Andrew on the vlog. I was like talking about Alexa and he's like, do you mean Electra? Electra, the premium format figure. And then we had the silk statue from the Mark Brooks artist series. Shout out to Mark Brooks because he is awesome. Uh, then we had a break and we showed you guys the nun and we had a kids side show segment. That's what I was forgetting. I was like, what is the segment I'm missing? The kids side show segment. Um, we are giving away that amazing Miles Morales fine art print by Anthony Francisco. Head on over to side.show slash L-Y-K-S spider sona. There it is again. So you guys, this has been an excellent show. Thank you all so much for watching. Please hang out with us next Tuesday during Side Show and Tell that is on our YouTube channel next Wednesday here. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show. Bye guys.